What's up everybody and today we're reacting to why no one wants to fight the A10 Warthog. I've been recommended this one after I put up a video not long ago about the A10 Warthog. Someone said you should watch this one because it's got a bit more information and it's a bit of a better video. So we're going to watch it, we're going to have some fun, we're going to check it out. As always, there'll be a link down below to the original video. Make sure you go to the description and check out the original video if you don't want to hear me waffling over the top of it. Check out Dreadnought Media in the description as well and don't forget to like comment and subscribe to help this channel with that mysterious YouTube algorithm. That would be very much appreciated. Other than that, let's shut up, let's pop this up, and let's have a cheeky peek. Turn the subbies on for everyone. Five reasons why no nation on Earth wants to fight the A-10 Warthog in a war. Oh my God. The sound that gun makes is just absolutely baffling, isn't it? Whew. A10 Warthog news. <laughs> oh my god, it looks sick. One simply does not mess with the A10 Thunderbolt and get away with it. True. Call her the A10 Thunderbolt, or more affectionately, A10 Warthog, but the U.S. Air Force Close Air Support Avenger will take a beating and still find a way to shower you with her low-altitude armor-piercing ammo. My god, that's terrifying, isn't it? <laughs> I feel like that noise in itself is already terrifying until you, and then you find out what's actually happening there and then it's 10 times more terrifying. Holy. The thing's a beast, isn't it, let's be honest. I really wish when I was living in America, I was traveling around the country and I didn't see one. I saw so many different uh, military bases and aircraft, and I never saw one. And that makes me kind of sad. I really wish I did. The A-10 is one of the most revered pieces of equipment that our fighting men and women have at their disposal. And its track record proves it. The 30 millimeter GAU 8A cannon that sits on the front of the A-10 with its barrel protruding from the nose is one of the heaviest automatic cannons ever mounted on an aircraft. Oh my Since God. the pilots are protected by titanium armor, which also protects parts of the flight control system. It's a flying tank. Just tell what it is. It's a flying tank. <laughs> the A-10 can linger longer in the battle zone in all kinds of conditions, including low visibility and darkness. The A-10 Thunderbolt has earned its reputation thanks to the bravery of her pilots and her performance above the battlefield. Yep. We're proud to give a little respect back to those who've served our great country and share a few of the reasons why the A-10 Warthog is an aircraft that should never be taken lightly. Oh my God. One, armament. Look at all the guns on that. Look at all the missiles. Oh my God. One, two, three, four, five, six. So that's 12 on each side. Seven, the big boy underneath. That's 13, sorry. Um, I think that actually might be another one on this side, which means there'll be... Yeah, it is. So uh, that's 15 plus the main gun. Oh, my God. Here's the total count. A 30-millimeter GAU 8A cannon, up to 16,000 pounds of mixed ordnance on eight underwing and three under fuselage pylon stations. Oh my God. A 500-pound MK-82 and 2,000-pound MK-84 series low-high drag bombs, incendiary cluster bombs, effects munitions, mine-dispensing munitions, an AGM-65 Maverick and AIM-9 Sidewinder missiles, plus a Gatling gun that's specifically designed to fire high-explosive incendiary and armor-piercing depleted uranium rounds at a rate of 3,900 rounds per minute. That's Jesus a serious Christ. aircraft with a bad attitude. Oh you want to shoot at this God. bad beast? Good luck with that. Yep. Night-night. Have a good one. God, that'll hurt in the morning, wouldn't it? Two. There's one thing I just never managed to see in the military was aircraft in use, and that makes me sad. Obviously, I did all anti-piracy more than anything, and so I never got to see this stuff. And that, honestly, is something that I really wish I managed, I got to see. You know, in a, in a controlled manner, not in war. Obviously, no one wishes for war, do they? Some people do. Survivability. Oh, 
Okay. The A10 has a honeycomb panel design that makes up the leading edges of the wing and tail, making them more resistant to battle damage. Okay. Interestingly, the front landing gear retracts under the wings while still sticking somewhat out of the fuselage, giving the Warthog a way to touch down with its landing gear up. Oh, this weird. This aircraft can survive multiple direct hits from armor-piercing and high-explosive projectiles, while its self-sealing fuel cells are protected by internal and external foam. Interesting. Like in 2003, when Captain Kim Campbell successfully brought her Warthog back from a close air support mission near Baghdad, her 75th Fighter Squadron Whoa. A-10 was hit by ground fire, taking extensive damage to the starboard vertical stabilizer. Look at the state of that. Oh, my God. And it's, she still managed to get it home. That's pretty impressive. That's some serious damage right there. Horizontal stabilizer, aft fuselage, and engine. Upon sustaining the hit, the airplane became uncontrollable, rolling left, nose down. After trying several ways to regain control, she engaged the backup mechanical flight control system. The jet responded, and with some help from her wingman, she landed back at her forward base. Wow, that's, that is impressive. That is very impressive. Yeah, that's very, very impressive. Thank God she got home. Three, range. At around 2,580 miles, the Warthog's flight range could get you from New York City to Los Angeles, California. Thanks to two General Electric TF-34 GE100 turbofan engines, the aircraft can achieve about 450 miles an hour. General Electric, they're the ones that are hiding UFOs. Aren't oh, no. That's Lockheed Martin. Oh, probably both of them hiding UFOs. We know you've got them. We know you've got them. Stop hiding them from us. That's another video, that, if you want to see that. <laughs> or Mach 0.75, making the Thunderbolt fast enough to be ultra deadly. Nice. Four, support. The A-10 Warthog has immeasurable value to our U.S. troops on the ground and plays a critical role in our military strategy in the Middle East and around the world. Yep. Arizona Representative Ruben Gallego said, I'm glad we were able to keep this fleet fully operational, and I will continue to fight to preserve this aircraft to ensure that the warfighter on the ground gets their air support. Yep. The A-10 was specifically designed for close air support. Oh, my God. Let's just go back a, just a... Look at that. That shows how many missiles it actually has underneath it, and that's terrifying. And that doesn't even look like it's fully loaded. That's not a fun sight to see. If you're seeing that flying over you, and it's not on your side, what do you do? Just call it a day, don't you? you got to call it a day. All right, lads, let's just call it a day. Crack open the can of beer, sit there. And wait to enter a different dimension. <laughs> Air support missions. It's large and varied ordnance, long loiter time above the battlefield, accurate weapons delivery, oh! and unfriendly field capability are more than well developed to be at the forefront of the ground forces around it. Imagine seeing that flying over you. You're about to find out if reincarnation's true, aren't you? As the U.S. Air Force says, the low-altitude safety and targeting enhancement upgrade provided computerized weapon aiming equipment, an autopilot, and a ground collision warning system, which includes multi-band communications, yep. mobile positioning system, and inertial navigation systems, infrared and electronic countermeasures against air-to-air -air and air-to-surface threats. Amazing. In other words, try to shoot at our ground troops, and we will not only shoot back, but unleash hell on you exactly where you stand. Holy. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I might as well just finish it off, lads. Not that it was already... Not that it was already in pieces. You're just going to... Send another one down, lads. Why not? Confirm the kill. <laughs> Five. Grit. That looks so cool. What happens to the audio? A-10 pilots have night vision capability to conduct missions during any hour after dark. I know what happened here. He got a copyright claim and then he uh, and, and then he took the audio out of it, used the YouTube thing. That's what happened here. The A-10 was also designed with a fast maintenance turnaround time in mind, 
to keep it on the battlefield. Nice. Things like damaged wing skins that can be replaced in the field. The cannon creating so much smoke while it's being fired that it looks like a forest fire. The Gatling gun that fires rounds the size of beer bottles makes the Warthog deserve its moniker, the Cross of Death. The Cross Certainly of the Death. the most important thing to remember is the pilots who fly these winged wonders and the ground crews that maintain them. Our fighting men and women are the real heroes, and the A-10 Thunderbolt True. is just another tool in the fight for freedom. Where do you think they are there? Just looking at the ground, I wonder where they're actually where they actually are located there. And a tool that works quite well, thank you. Contemporary Air Force F-15 and F-16 pilots like to joke that A-10s don't have instrument panel clocks; they have calendars. <laughs> at the time, the Air Force's high-tech fighter faction, which included most of Air Force leadership, considered the twin-engined straight wing airplane an anachronistic dud. What did it do the there? It kind of like tilted up and then carried on. Do you see that? in the modern battlefield where it was supposed to kill Russian tanks. Whether you're talking about a sophisticated stealth bomber or flying machine gun, it's never easy to bring a new warplane into being. True. How the A-10 program survived its first few years is a complicated story. Former A-10 pilot and author Colonel Arden B. Dahl, retired, contends that the Thunderbolt II made it to production by prevailing in two key political battles. Between the maneuverability and the survivability, the A-10 Fleet Fighter Squadron has taken on Operation Enduring Freedom, Desert Storm, and ISIS, wherever they may be, making it one of our best weapons in the fight for freedom around the globe. So yeah, it's still in use. It's going to be used many times. I wouldn't be surprised if they send some... Well, they're not going to send some of these to Yemen. I don't even know how they would get there because they can't go off the off the um, aircraft carriers, can they? So where would they fly from? What bases are around there? Oh, you've got a uh, Bahrain. Does that have an airstrip? Does Bahrain have an airstrip? Airstrip? I've been there. It was actually a really nice US base. I was there um, in 2010. Checked that base out. It was really nice. Had a really cool store there. I bought myself The Witcher 2 on laptop so that when I went back on ship, I was able to play Witcher 2 in my downtime on the laptop. What a great game. Bit of a tangent there. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah, that thing's a beast, in it? Is it going to have any more voiceover over it? Or is... I know it looks like he's got a copyright claim for music, and so he's been chopping the music out of it, and he's just having the voiceover on it. Where are they there? Like New Mexico. Actually, no. That's got to be like... Well, that's not. That's a different place now. That's completely different. That looks more like America. That could definitely be like New Mexico or something, but it looks way too desert -y. I think it might be the Middle East somewhere that. Bear in mind, I spent a lot of time in, in New Mexico. Is it weird that the there's no more audio? Is it just... Yeah, I guess that's it, pretty much. Great video. Um, This was by... Uh, let me find out for you real quick. It was by US Military News. There'll be a link down below to the original video. Go check that out if you haven't already. The A-10 Warthog is probably one of my favorite um, aircraft right up there with the F-22. I just think it's a beast. It looks cool. I think it's just got the experience. I think it's got the firepower. And I think it's an all-round decent tool. I wonder if anyone knows how long it's going to be in service for. And if it's going to be much longer. Because even the F-22 is only got until 2030, I think it is. Um, so let me know what you think in the comment section. If you've seen one of these, if you've flown one of these, if you've been near one of these, let me know in the comment section down below. Um, don't forget to like, subscribe, and all that good stuff. It helps with that mysterious YouTube algorithm. And until next time, I love you all. Have a wonderful day. Goodbye.